The thing I most admire about David is his outlook on life. He's relentlessly optimistic. He's been able to be a committed husband and father and entrepreneur at the same time as being spinal cord injured. I was playing soccer on the beach and I just ran down to the water uh, to cool off and did a shallow dive and there was a sandbar that I hit my head on and broke my neck. What's been remarkable for David has been his ability to incorporate that into who he is and, um, and continue on with so many aspects of who he was before he was injured. He epitomizes a, um, a successful person who did not allow the spinal cord injury to stop him. He is an advocate for both good science and for people with disabilities. I think I saw pretty early on in my work on stem cell research how powerful it is to have uh, patients and scientists working together. Caring is not enough. The science is not enough. It's the intersection between them. Understanding not just what the political position is, what the research position is, but what it's going to mean to the patient. David is always there in those conversations with that voice. For the first time, this coalition of scientists, of patient groups, came together in a united front. To start a, a, a revolution in the state of California that put billions of dollars into embryonic stem cell research. There were five million patient advocates that came together. 59% of the voters passed this referendum. This was one of the most amazing political victories of, of in, in our century. David, even before his injury, was extremely active. He didn't let the injury stop him. He, completed his MBA at Stanford and eventually became a White House Fellow. The call to service has been as strong as any religious conviction that we've had in, in our household. David has really been a partner from the very beginning in the conception of the New York Stem Cell Foundation. He's a leading light in stem cell research and he's brilliant at both the science and the politics. He understands what drives businesses and what drives science and what drives people with disabilities, and this makes them unique. I sincerely believe that you're gonna need a combination of both scientists and patient advocates to continue to push uh, research forward. Berkeley is a perfect example. When you drive on campus, you see the physical therapists out there with their patients, and then you can drive up to the uh, research center where researchers are trying to come up with new cures for the patients that are right outside. That's a very powerful combination. The best thing is just when people see somebody who has their same disability and they've gone on with their life. He's very deserving of this honor, not only from the viewpoint of the community, from the viewpoint of stem cell advocacy, but I think as a person who is a symbol of how one can succeed while being in a wheelchair, he's a role model for everybody.